Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, this lecture is part of the um, advanced mathematics course for high school students. I recommend you to go to unizor.com to watch this lecture um, because it's just part of the whole course and uh, obviously all lectures are uh, interdependent. Um, so take the course. And um, well, in this particular case, I would like to uh, continue talking about statistical evaluation of Bernoulli experiments. In particular, um, I would like to use um, something which we um, have studied before called um, sample variance to evaluate, um, much better evaluate, um, the variance of, of the sample um, in order to more precisely um, evaluate the um, margin of error. It's very important actually because um, more precise evaluation of the margin of error or with a given margin of error um, evaluate more precisely how many experiments you need to achieve this particular margin of error. So that, that's all very important and uh, uh, the difference between my old approach where I'm where I was just evaluating very crudely the number of experiments or margin of error just based on number, exper number of experiments without regard of what kind of experiments I have, without regard to the data. So um, I expect that evaluation would be much more precise and better and that's actually how people do it in real life more often than um, than crude evaluation we were talking about before. And I will talk about exactly the same three problems which were presented before, a couple of lectures ago, and I was solving these problems based on, as I was saying, a crude methodology. Crude methodology actually was, uh, let me just remind you, that if you have, let's say, a random variable uh, C which takes value 1 and 0 with probabilities P and 1 minus P. Then uh, to evaluate P for instance with certain margin of error we have conducted N experiments and the results of these experiments Um, are also ones and zeros, right? So their sum divided by the number n is actually um, a frequency of occurring this particular event, right? Because it occurs and the x is equal to 1 and it doesn't occur x is equal to 0, so sum of ones is actually number of occurrences divided by n is frequency. And frequency is something which we were using to um, to define the probability, right? This probability p. It's kind of a limit of the frequency as number of experiments goes to infinity. So we have conducted n experiments, and now we are saying that well, yes, we understand that if n goes to infinity, that frequency would probably go to p. But uh, since we are not in an infinite situation, we are a finite situation. Question is how close this is to this. Well, to evaluate this, we have considered an uh, independent, identically distributed uh, variable Xc1, Xn, identically distributed as these ones, and considered this particular random variable, eta. So basically, this is a single value of this random variable, right? Now, if this random variable, which we can basically evaluate in some, in some way, if this random variable has a very small variance, then the frequency with a high probability lives within the vicinity of the mean of this. Now, mean obviously is the same as p, because mean of every one is, is p, so it's n times p uh, divided by n, so it's, uh, um, so it's p 
and that's why we can say that this particular value of this particular variable random variable might be close to its mean value if variance is small now variance of this we were calculating before it's p times 1 minus p divided by n so variance goes to zero as n goes to infinity so it's quite reasonable to assume that with large n variance would be would be small and variance is basically a measurement of how far from the mean our random variables actually lie so we were approximating with a normal um, variable this thing because it's sum of independent identically distributed variables so it's distribution very close to normal we can so we can consider a normal variable with the same um, uh, mean and the same um, variance and then I made a very crude evaluation of this variance since p times 1 minus p is always less than or equal to 1 quarter uh, when p is from 0 to 1 then the whole thing is evaluated this way so now I know basically the variance of our almost normal variable and know its uh, um, mean and since the variance in this particular case is evaluated from above using only n then I can use something like a 2 sigma rule sigma rule and say that with probability 0. Uh, what was it 95 45 my um, probability of uh, my eta to be within vicinity of this uh, mean this probability to be vicinity less than 2 sigma so this probability is higher than 90, 0.9545 so that's a variation of margin of error and the certainty level we can say that our random variable lies within this margin of error from its mean which is p so I can say that whenever I have calculated this based on my experiments uh, with probability 0 0.9545 um, it's very close to um, the p which I would like to evaluate with margin of error equals to uh, 2 sigma now if variance is this then 2 sigma would be 1 over 2 square root of n, right? So it's square root of this, standard deviation. So that's my evaluation based on this relatively rude um, margin, um, uh, top margin for my variance. Now, this is good if p is very close to 1 half. If it's equal to 1 half, it's equal to 1 fourth, right? But if, it's, but, but if p is small, this becomes a very, very crude evaluation. And it results in the necessity to have a very large number of experiments to achieve the same um, margin of error um, which we desire. So let me now switch from this to more precise evaluation of my variance using this sample. Um, and you will see what kind of um, results we will get. We will get much better results with small p's. And these are my three little problems which I have presented before using the crude evaluation of the variance. And now we will do it with more precise evaluation based on the sample which we have received. So now, if we have received a sample x1 etc xn what we do first to uh, approximate the variance first we do approximation of mean 
that's what you know. And then we do the approximation as square equals to um, x1 minus m square plus etc plus xn minus m square divided by n. So this is my approximation of the variance, right? Now, we have already um, discussed that if this is Sn, Sn is actually um, the evaluation of the variance which is not exactly um, having the mean value the same as, as the unknown variance. So it's kind of skewed a little bit, right? Biased, as we say. And Sn minus 1, which is the same numerator but the denominator is n minus 1. This is unbiased evaluation. So we will use this evaluation of the variance. Now, let's use this particular variation in our three problems. So the problem number one is I don't really need this. I'll use this real estate for the problems. So the problem number one is we have 10,000 experiments. We are manufacturing parts and the experiment is whether the part is defective or not. And let's say we've got 300 defective parts. Now, I would like to evaluate with certainty level 0 0.9545 what is the probability of my part to be defective based on this particular um, sampling. Well, first what we do is we calculate um, arithmetic average of this and this is 300 divided by 10,000 which is 0 0.03 so this is basically our evaluation of the probability of uh, manufacturing defective part 300 question is how good it is what's the margin of error of this particular um, evaluation so now what is M well as I was saying before m is equal to x1 plus etc plus xn divided by n. This is a single value of this variable where c, all, all c's are identically distributed and independent variables exactly as our unknown one. So now I would like to evaluate the quality of approximation my probability with this number m based on the variance of eta. So let's calculate. Um, so the sample variance and I will put n minus 1 here in this case. Now what is this? Well we have experiments 300 times when our um, variable took the value of 1, right? So its difference square from the mean is this one. And other 900, 9,000, sorry, 700. We had value of zero. Right? And we have to divide it by 9,999, right? Because this is n minus 1. Okay? So it's 999. 9,999. So this is our variation of variance of our variable C, original one. 
Now, how about variance of eta? Now, we know it's the variance of C divided by N, right? Where N is number of experiments. Because eta is C1 plus C2, etc., plus Xn divided by N, and the variance of sum is equal to um, 1 over n square in this particular case, and then n variances of, uh, of c, so it would be 1 over n. So, now, what I'm actually interested in is not really variance of uh, eta, but uh, standard deviation of eta, right? So, which is square root of variance of c divided by n. So, we have to make the calculation of this one, and I think I did it at 0 0.0291, right? So this is 0 0.97 times 300, which is like almost like 280, 290, something like this, right? And this is very close to zero. So it's uh, approximately, that's what it is, 291, 10 thousandths. So what I have to do now is I have to divide it by 10,000 and extract the square root. So that would be 0 0.0291 divided by 10,000 and have a square root. And that my calculations show is 0 0.0017. So, this is sigma. Now, I need this C uh, certainty level which is corresponding to 2 sigma in normal distribution, right? So, 2 sigma of eta would be 0 0.0034. So, what I can say right now is that with probability 0 point, with certainty level, I would rather say... Um, 0 0.9545, I can say that unknown probability of my part to be defective is within 0 0.0334 and 0 0.0266. Now, let me remind you that the probability, the, the margin of error when I was using a crude evaluation of my um, variance in the first um, way how I solved this problem without using the sample variance, just using this. So n is 10,000, so uh, it's uh, 1 over 200, so double sigma is 100, so in that old evaluation, I had 0 0.02, 0 0.04, which is a wider margin of error. So, as you see, my empirical evaluation is really, with this level of certainty, is really much better if I'm using the more precise evaluation of the variance. So, if I do it more precisely using the sample variance, I can say more precisely where is my real probability is. So, more precisely evaluating um, of the margin of, uh, of the um, variance leads to more precise evaluation of the P. This is a wider interval, this is a more narrow interval. And that definitely is desired, right? So, with the same certainty level, using more precise calculations gives more precise um, evaluation of unknown probability p. All right? Now, the second problem is basically the same as this one. All I have to do is what if I would like to have my um, evaluation even um, twice uh, smaller than the previous one. The previous one was 0034. I would like to half it. 
So I would like this evaluation uh, two eight three. So I'm adding seventeen ten thousands plus and seventeen thousand minus to the mean value. So I'm making my interval uh, narrower, twice as narrow as before. Question is, what's the certainty level I have to attribute to this evaluation? Well, so, now this was before, it was 2 sigma, 0 0.034, right? That gave me this particular certainty level. Here, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for uh, 34. So I'm looking for this margin of error. So I'm narrowing interval from 2 sigma around mean to 1 sigma around mean. And as you remember, the certainty level of this is obviously smaller. If I'm making a more narrow interval, my certainty level obviously should be less. So this is the certainty level for this particular um, margin of error. So in this particular case I get um, I get number of experiments, level of certainty, and I have determined the margin of error. The second problem was I don't have a level of certainty. I define my margin of error and then I derive the certainty level <coughs> as being this one. Certain, uh, 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 it's smaller, actually, obviously. Now, the third problem was to evaluate the number of intervals if, uh, sorry, number of experiments, if I have um, defined for myself level of certainty and uh, margin of error. So, let's do this. So, as before, n experiments, right, produce certain results. Now, I would like, with this, um, with this level of certainty, define how many experiments I should get to get margin of error equal one uh, thousandths. So before, if you remember, my margin of error was 0 0.0034, which is more than three times greater than this. So I would like to have a very, very narrow, narrow interval, right? But I would still like to have this level of certainty, which necessitates increase of the number of experiments. Now, let's do the um, very rude uh, calculations of how many experiments I need without using the, uh, the sample variance, using the uh, lecture, um, the material which I was do doing in the previous lecture when I introduced these two problems first. So if I would like this, and I would like this certainty level, then my sigma is supposed to be half of this, right? So delta should be 2 sigma, um, which means 0 0.0005, right? That's something which I would like to have, which is supposed to be this, right? So what's the n? Well, um, it's 1,000, so it's 1,000, so n is equal to 1 million. Right? So I need a million experiments to achieve this particular margin of error with this certainty level. Well, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> nobody nobody is doing million experiments, I, I, I bet. Now, why is such a big number? Well, primarily because we were using a very crude evaluation of our variance. Now, what I'm asking is, Let's do the sample variance, which is more precise evaluation, right? Uh, and try to basically um, reduce this number of experiments. Now, what's the problem? Well, the problem is 
We don't know the end, we don't have experiments, we have not started our experimentation, we don't have data x1, etc., xn to calculate the, the, the sample variance. So, it looks like I cannot calculate the sample variance and this is the only way um, I, I have to do. Well, that's not exactly true, because what we can do is we can start experimenting, stop at certain level, not very large, but reasonable, okay? And then we will have some data and try to evaluate the um, sample variance based on these data which we will obtain. And then, if it's necessary, we will continue experimentation to the number which is desired to get a more precise evaluation. So, in this case, I'm suggesting to do the following. Let's just have 100 experiments, all right? and see what our data is. Then, based on this data, we will calculate sample uh, variance, and then that would be something to start our calculations, right? Okay, so, let's consider we have 100 experiments, and we have four defective parts. Okay? Now, how can I define, based on these, my sample variance? Well, very simply, the sample variance of Xi approximately is S square 99, right? I divide by 99, which is equal to what? 4 times I get 1 minus 0 0.04 by the way, 4 divided by 100 is 0 0.04, so that's my m uh, square. Plus 96 times, I've got 0. And we have to divide it by 99. So that's my sample variance of the variable, random variable Xi, which I have calculated somewhere. Uh, okay, 0 0.0388. Okay. Now, now what should I do? Now I need sigma of of eta, which is sum of xi1, xi2, etc. divided by um, 100. So I have 2 divided by 100. And uh, take the square root of it, which is 0 0.0197. Okay, fine. So, this is my sample variance of my 100 experiments. Now, which sample variance do I need? Well, I need sample variance one half of delta, which is 0 0.0005, right? With this level of certainty, my margin of error should be 2 sigma. Well, obviously this is significantly higher than this one. So, obviously, with 100 experiments, we have not achieved the precision we need. Uh, margin of error would be like 0 0.4 or something like this. All right, so what do we do? Well, let's think about this way. This is about 40 times larger than this. This is five ten thousandths, this is almost two hundred two thousandths, right? Right? So ratio is forty. I have to reduce my variance, well my my, my um, standard deviation by the factor of forty. Now we know that the st standard deviation of eta is one over n uh, standard deviation, which is square root of this. So it's 1 over square root of this standard deviation of Xi. 
right? So, this is very important, which actually means that my standard deviation of uh, empirical average, which is eta, is proportional to 1 over square root of m. So if I would like to reduce by 40 times, I have to really uh, have 40 square more experiments. So I have to conduct 1,600 times more experiments than I have already achieved because my standard deviation is proportional to reverse proportional to square root of number of experiments. So if I have conducted 100 experiments and got this standard deviation to achieve this, which is 40 times less, I need 1600 more times to conduct the same experiment, which is 100. So it's 100 times 1600. So it would be 100 times 1600, which is 160,000. Now, look at this, 160,000. If you remember the crude evaluation of my variance, based on just number of experiments, gave a million. So, 160,000 is much less than a million. It's still a lot. <laughs> but first of all, um, let's just think about it. 160,000 experiments, even with a very good precision, we will have evaluation within one thousandth. So, from zero point let's say in this, in this case it's 0 0.04 before we were talking about 0 0.03 anyway this is something which we are considering as a, a, a real approximate value so whatever we have done 160,000 times we will add them up together divide by 160,000 and we will get some evaluation this or this or something like this and what we are talking about that around this particular value the margin of error is 100 so for instance if we've got um, 4,800 out of 116,000 it's a round number because this is equal to 0 0.03 right yeah 300 so now I can say that it's with this particular level of certainty, uh, my probability lies around 0 0.03 and the margin of error is this one, which is from 0 0.029 to 0 0.031, which is really a relatively precise evaluation. If we are talking that the probability of something is around 0 0.3 plus or minus uh, one thousandths, it's a very good evaluation. But to, to, to achieve this good evaluation, you need so many experiments, you see. Now, what do you think the precision would be acceptable for you? If you are talking about defective numbers, for instance, and if you have 0 0.03, like 3 out of 100 approximately, now which precision would be, you know, considered to be um, really important for you, informative? If I will say, let me go back, if I will say that um, the probability of getting the defective uh, part is 0 0.03 based on my experiments, plus or minus 0 0.01, which is from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, is it a good evaluation? I don't think so. So 10,000 experiments, as we had before, give me this if, with a crude evaluation. Now, even with a precision evaluation, it's still, using the um, sample variance, it was 0 0.0034. So it's from 0 0.0266 uh, 
to 0 0.0334. It's still a very large distance between these. Um, if I will evaluate two different manufacturing facilities, and one would be this, and another would be with the same precision, let's say um, this. Uh, 0 0.3, sorry, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, uh, so it's 34, 66, 44 for something like this, right? I'm not sure. Now, you see which one is better? Well, I have no idea which one is better because these intervals overlap. And this one is so these are overlapping now since they are overlapping I cannot distinguish one from another with this with a level of certainty 0 0.9545 but if my variation is narrower and situation is this That's one, and another one would be something like this. Now, these intervals are not overlapping, because this maximum is 0 0.031, and the minimum of this is 0 0.031. So, intervals are like this. 0 0.0 0 0.031 and 0 0.033 so this is my one manufacturing facility this one and this is one another manufacturing facility so this one all these probabilities are smaller than all these probabilities well except this one but it's just considered to be just one point so I can definitely say that this is worse than this because in this case, my probability of making a, a defective part is, is, is always less. So that's why it's very important to have this precision. And precision requires experimentation. And as you saw, in this relatively practical case, well, three out of a hundred, that's normal, I would say, for a defective part, right? It requires 160,000 experiments to have a reasonable level of precision. Now, let me just go back to some practical situations. We have all these statistical evaluations in um, uh, pharmaceutical industry and in some other cases, and we are not dealing with 160,000 experiments. We are dealing with much less, which means that the level of certainty is significantly less than 0 0.95 or something. And if that's true, well, we have to actually make our conclusions based on uh, these certainty levels and and the margin of errors and it's not easy that's why all these uh, statistical uh, evaluation of let's say new uh, drugs on the market or something like this they're not precise they're working in some cases they're not working in another cases we do not have sufficient amount of um, data to be uh, certain about certain concrete results of, let's say, drugs or something like this. So, I would suggest you to read again the, con uh, the calculations which I am uh, presenting in the notes for this lecture on unizor.com. And uh, other than that, that would probably be the end of the Bernoulli statistical distributions analysis. And we will go into some other things. Thanks very much and good luck.